If you want to learn more about how a crop sensor impacts focal length, then stay tuned. This video is for you. I've received a lot of questions regarding crop sensors and focal length. And I just finished up with a hard workout and I have all my gear with me and I thought now is probably a good time to go ahead and create this video. So I'm going to start off by providing a game plan of how this is going to work out. Now it's getting late in the day and the sun's starting to set. But I'm going to start off by going over the gear that I have. And then I'm going to give you a more detailed explanation about how crop sensors come into play with focal length. And then I'm going to take a couple of sample shots so you can see how that really works out and finish up with a few final thoughts. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's talk about the gear. To begin with, I have two cameras with me. Of course, I have the trusty Nikon D3400, which is a crop sensor. And I also have a Nikon D600. Now this is a full sensor camera. And for our lens, I have the fixed 50 right here. Now I really like this lens and I did a review on it. If you haven't seen it, I'll post a link in the description below so you can go ahead and take a look at it. But again, I really like this lens. Now let's go ahead and talk in a little more detail about focal length and crop sensors. Now to begin with, what you need to really understand is how a lens works and what is focal length. So again, this lens right here has a fixed focal length of 50 millimeters. Now it has glass elements in it. And the way this works is that the scene and the light come in through the glass and they converge. And then they come out the back side of the lens and they go to the sensor. Now that distance from that point of convergence to the sensor is measured typically in millimeters. And that is your focal length. It's that simple. So when we talk about a fixed 50 millimeter lens, that would mean that the point of convergence in this lens to the sensor is 50 millimeters. Now, I'm just going to give you a quick question here. What happens if I put this lens on the crop sensor? What is that distance? It's 50 millimeters. Okay. What happens if I take this lens, again 50 millimeters, and put it on a full sensor? Did the distance change at all? No, it didn't. So, a 50 millimeter lens on a full sensor is 50 millimeters. And a 50 millimeter lens on a crop sensor is still 50 millimeters. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, hey Mark, but wait a second. If I take a photo with the fixed 50 on the full sensor, I get a much wider field of view. And you put it on the crop sensor and it looks like it's cropped. Why is that? Well, it's because of this. The sensor size is smaller in the crop sensor. And that means instead of getting an image, say the field of view is like this on a full sensor, you're getting this. So it looks like it's magnified. And that's where the crop factor comes into play. Now with Nikon, that crop factor is 1.5. And that would mean that you would take the 50 millimeter lens, multiply it by 1.5 to get the full sensor equivalent. And that's what that crop factor is all about. So what that means is that if I put this 50 millimeter on the crop sensor body right here and take a shot, I would have to put a 75 millimeter on the full sensor body to get that same field of view. So I hope that makes sense. Now, Canon is 1.6, and that just means that that crop sensor is just a little bit difference of a size than the Nikon crop sensor. That's all that means. Now, I'm gonna step into just a couple of photo examples. So I'm gonna go out here, I got some woods and, and some landscape over here, and I'm gonna take this Fix 50 and we're gonna put it on the full sensor, take a shot, and then put it on the crop sensor, take a shot, and we'll see what they look like. So let's go ahead and make that happen. I've got the Nikon D600 set up here with the Fix 50 attached to it. And the camera body is attached to the tripod. Now keeping in mind, I'm gonna take a shot of the scenery that's behind me here, and it's really nothing but some trees. This is not meant to be an award-winning photo by any stretch of the imagination. Keeping in mind, I really just want you to see the difference of how this crop factor comes into play using the same focal length. Now I'm shooting an aperture priority. Let's go ahead and take a shot, see what it looks like. As you can see by this image, it's nothing special and it really wasn't meant to be. 
But what I want you to take note of is some of the items in the image on the left side and the right side. So take a look at the fence posts on the right side of the image and then maybe some trees on the far left hand side. I've got the D3400 now on the tripod with the Fix 50 attached to it. And again, it's pointing in the same direction. Um, and I'm focused on about the exact same spot I was with the D600. Let's go ahead and take a shot, see what it looks like. Take a close look at this image and look to the far left and the far right, and you should easily identify those items that are missing from the full sensor camera. So on the far right hand side, we had fence posts and on the far left, we just had more trees in there. And keeping in mind that this is a result of the crop factor, it's just that the sensor size is smaller compared to the full sensor. Time for a few final thoughts. Now this was meant to be a very quick video just to get this information out there because I've received a lot of questions on it. So again, the next time you're asking yourself the question, hey, if I put a Fix 50 onto a crop sensor, is that really 75? Well, technically it's not. It remains 50 millimeters. But from a practical perspective, if you're comparing it to a full sensor camera, then yes, it does kind of mirror a 75 millimeter on a full sensor camera. But what I really want you to understand and take away from all of this is to not be too concerned about that, but instead just understand your gear, understand how to use it, get out there, have some fun, unwind, relax, capture those memories and those moments. That's really what it's all about, right? So if this video has helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, Check the description below, I'm going to post a link as to where you can do that and we can share some images over there, have some fun as well. Now if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel, it's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.